If you painted with watercolors before, you would notice that one of the most challenging colors to paint is black. In my opinion, pigments like paints gray and ivory black are suitable for something moody, kind of like a gritty urban landscape, but they will not be very suitable for painting this cute black bunny. So in this video I will demonstrate how to use various other colors and mix them on paper to achieve very painterly, deep, luminous darks. I will test a couple of color combinations real quick. First one is Scarlet Lake and Prussian Blue. As you see on the color wheel above, they are complementary colors, so they should neutralize each other. And because I'm using very saturated mixture, after they dry, they will be sufficiently dark to represent black. And another combo I'm trying is Cascade Green, which is a very cool green with Windsor Red, which is basically cadmium red. And they also sufficiently opposite each other on the color wheel to form a new dark color. Now we can start painting. I'm going to start layering my pigments. I obviously don't want it to be deep black everywhere. Some portions of the bunny are lit with some sunlight, so they need to be slightly lighter. I dampened my watercolor paper with some clean water and I'm working with a round brush. Wet in your paper is important because I don't want color to sink into the paper right away. I want it to mix on the surface. And I also don't want any sharp edges because Bunny is fluffy, so he won't have he won't be cut out and pasted on paper. He will have soft edges all around. And immediately I'm starting to drop in Scarlet Lake on top of my Prussian blue. And you can see that I'm achieving a dark neutral color in some areas. Let's fluff him out a little more with some clean water. I always have two containers, one for cleaning my brush and one for clean water. And I'll just keep going in layers. And maybe I can throw in some other colors as well, maybe some green. Oops, I have so much water and pigment on my paper now that round brush holds too much water. And if you saw it kind of pushed the color away and I don't want that. So I'm going to switch to a flat brush. Yeah, it works much better. And I'll just continue adding pigment. And I'm also going to lift in some areas where I need my bunny to be a little lighter. So it's push and pull work. I'm adding pigment in some areas and I'm lifting it in some other areas to make them lighter. And I think some mineral violet, my favorite color, will be good here too mixed with Scarlet Lake and Prussian Blue, it will give me an even deeper tone. Notice that I'm not applying it up to the edge of the bunny, because like I said, the bunny is rounded, so the edges will not be dark, otherwise he will look flat. And we want to keep him cute and rounded. I think bunnies are very cute, and I've heard they make really good pets. I've never had one, but let me know in comments if you ever had a pet bunny. How do you feel about them in general? I'll be curious to know, just comment below. And flat brush works really well for painted fur because you can start adding texture as well. And we can throw in some background. I don't want him to be on a white sheet of paper. So I'm going to get a big brush and just throw in a few colors to very abstractly indicate some sunlight and some shadows and some grass that he's sitting on. I had a little blossom where I dropped some water on this side. So I'm gonna clean it up with a stiff brush, but it's no big deal. It's, I like those watercolor effects. And now let's darken his eyes and his nose and his face even more. This is the focal point, so it needs to have most contrast out of all the bunny. And I will 
deepen everything and I will keep adding some texture. I'm using a flat angle brush. Like I said, it's really good for showing fur texture. You can turn it on the edge. And the reason I have to keep adding those layers of color is watercolor lightens when it dries. So when that happens, I can see that my tonal relationships are not quite there. So the darks are not dark enough and I need to keep working on them. And we can even pull out some color, unify our subject with the background to use the same colors in the shadows on the ground between the rocks. And here he is. And the last thing I need to do after everything dried and is add some accents, which I'm going to do with white gouache. So there will be a big highlight in his eye and maybe his nose can get a little more defined. He's got white whiskers and like little white hairs here and there. So I'm going to do that with my flat angled brush. And I'm also using white gouache mixed with uh, Prussian blue so that it's not like super bright white everywhere. So I get a little variety in my highlights as well. And another thing I like to do is splatter a little white here and there. It shows kind of like dappled light on the ground. I hope you enjoyed this demonstration where I painted a black bunny without any black or gray pigments using mostly primary colors mixed directly on paper. I teach online classes. More information on tamirab.com. Let's get connected on social media where I post new art, information about new classes and videos. And please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time in Tamirab Studio.